I've actually managed to get this on my desk without killing myself. I don't know how because, I mean it's not really heavy but it's more than I usually try to carry. Um, it's what, the folding handlebars on this make it very very comfortable for propping up against things because you can get it in a bit more. I do like, I do like this. I do like it. Front and rear discs and everything else. And anyway, this motor is 600 watts. Now that's 600 watts constant. Generally speaking, what they rate these things at is whatever they say is the constant output. So the boost output can be probably double that. So I'm going to put 1500 watts through it. <laughs> uh, you, you can probably get away with three times the power. Anyway, in here is the controller, which is actually held in with you know, kitchen paper or kitchen towel because it worked. So I've got to take this out and fit the other one to test it. Job done. Um, I'm sorry about the camera angle, it's the only way I can actually get it. I'm not moving the camera over, you can kiss my ass. I'm not doing that. These wires here are very, very tight. We've got the charge lead, which has got a Dean's connector on. They always have a Dean's connector on, I don't know why. These are for throttle, all the handlebar things, the cut-off switches that I don't need. These are for, I haven't got the faintest idea, but I don't need them. All I need these. This is the Hall Sense connection and there's six wires, not five, six. Focus your foot. There's six wires. So we've got positive temperature sense, which I didn't even know these things did. Uh, and then we've got three Hall wires and then we've got a negative. Now the Hall Sense wires, we've got blue, orange and green. And on here we've got blue, yellow and green so i'm presuming the yellow is actually the orange on there which is what i'm going to do i'm going to see if i've got some bullet connectors the same as that just so as i can sort of easily swap these things out if i need to put the other one in i'm going to make it all so as i can connect this one up as well i haven't finished with this i will see if i can do it because it's much smaller lighter and everything than that one i think the first thing i'm going to do is take this apart and see what's inside it because I can't believe that small package there is actually going to handle the amount of current that they say. Uh, I might need to beef things up. This is I think going to be pulling 1500 watts which shouldn't even phase this to be honest. By the way that there, that's the LED indicator. This is obviously a Chinese clone of the VESC uh, controller. Um, I've just been through everything I can see and nothing is wrong, nothing at all. It's got the, the current handling uh, and everything seems to be fine. I'm still gonna go over a few points like these with uh, leaded solder. I don't like unleaded on, on, on things like this purely because leaded solder doesn't, it cracks easily. Uh, these caps are actually positioned like this purely because of the LED. Now I don't know, I might actually put the LED external somewhere and then I can seal that up completely and then I can line these caps up properly because they are, they're not pinching the wires but they are actually on the wires so I think I'm going to take that, I'm going to put it external somewhere. Okay, this is the VESC tool, the connection. Um, I went through the auto connect on here um, and it works no problem at all. It just connected and then it came up here with a thing saying it's got the old firmware on it. So I'll go through the firmware update now. So you go onto firmware after you've connected, go onto bootloader, select that bootloader. It was, there's only one that came up. Download, are you sure? Yes. So that's the bootloader done. Go on to including included files and then you select you select that one to say non-default non firmwares and you want the default no hardware limits. Click on download. Uh, are you sure? Yes. 
Now it says the firmware upload is done. You must wait at least 10 seconds before unplugging power. I don't know if you have to. I didn't. I didn't unplug the power. I just, um, at the bottom right here, it says not connected. I just reconnected and it worked fine. So if I go on to real time data now, it shows me the battery voltage just to make sure that it's reading something at least. So it's got 16.6 .6 volts, which is the voltage of the battery. If you want to test just to make sure that everything's working properly, if you go on to um, the welcome wizard, uh, setup motor, uh, or the, the defaults, yes. Select, I'm just going to use a generic motor purely because it's a hub motor and that's all. I've got a large outrunner, about two kilo. Yeah, which it is, it's above, 750 grams so I'm going to use the large outrunner are you sure blah, 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 blah. yes battery cells I'm going to select 4s 6 ampere hours near enough uh, battery current regen I don't want battery current max blah that thing is unchecked by default because I've gone through this already I'm going to select 5 amps next uh, take no notice of that for the time being all I'm doing here is just checking to make sure that everything is working the controller is actually working and it will give you some erroneous details here uh, it says it's sensorless because it can't detect the hall sensors this is literally just to test to make sure the controller works what I'm going to do now is connect it to the scooter and then we'll go through all the configuration again just to make sure that everything works. I expected these things to turn up next week. They're going to take a lot of work. They're completely, totally and utterly blank. Sweet! I've got sweets in my bag. So all the little, literally, hang on, grains of salt I've got to put on. Must be bloody mad. They're not too overly purple, look. Wow. That little thing there is, has got to be a resistor, and I've got to put another one on there. There's got to be one on there. There's got to be one on there. So there's, there's 40 separate resistors that have got to be put on. And then I've got the voltage dividers, which have got to go on there. And then I've got the components to go on to uh, the display. And then obviously I've got the display FPC to put on as well. And then the battery, the resistors. Uh, I've got 80, 40, 40 of them to solder on. Which are half a millimetre by one millimetre. The only way I'm going to get these on is literally by tagging them. So if I tag them on one end, am I on camera? Yes. If this comes on, if that display comes on, that's the main thing. Are you ready? F*** <laughs> 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 <laughs>
What's the lines? Is it broken? Yeah, that means it doesn't work. No, as in, is the screen broken because no. it's got fuzzy lines? Oh. It just means it doesn't work. Oh. It means that it sort of works. <laughs>